Osborne, and I am a parenting and child development specialist in the Family and Consumer Sciences Extension at UK. And I have the distinct pleasure and honor uh, getting to introduce our speaker today, Christine Hosman. She is not only a wonderful colleague, but someone who is truly invested in uh, early childhood development. And today she's going to be sharing with us um, the CDC's Learn the Signs Act Early initiative. And, and what this initiative is all about is something she'll share a lot more of, but it, it, in short, it encourages families to track their children's development through the use of some really handy tools. And these tools, uh, today I think the ones she's gonna talk about are, are free to use. And so um, without further ado, Christine, thank you for being here and I look forward to hearing what you have to share today. All right, well, thank you very much for the invitation. I am very excited to be here. Um, and all right, <laughs> so now I'm distracted because my, my, my slide won't advance. Okay, um, so the, um, the, the main reason why I'm here to talk to you today is about Learn the Signs, Act Early. And Learn the Signs, Act Early is actually an initiative through the CDC. Um, which has, oops, hold on, I'm just getting a message. Um, Mindy, is that okay? Looks good. Okay, there we go. All right, <laughs> thank you so much, I appreciate it. All right, um, so yes, the, the uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to start over. So one of the hats that I get to wear through the University of Kentucky, I do work right at UK, pretty much right across the street from, um, from David, and I work at the Mineral, in Mineral Industries Building. And one of the hats that I wear is as the CDC ambassador to Kentucky for Learn the Signs Act Early, which is an initiative for helping teach families how to monitor their child's development and then quote unquote act early, Learn the Signs Act Early, should they have any concerns about their child's development. So it was initially designed to identify children that were on the autism um, spectrum disorder, but um, as research was um, done uh, on, as evaluations were done on the, on the program, they learned that we want to identify children with any developmental delay, whether it's a child on the uh, autism spectrum or not. All right, so Mindy, why is it not advancing again? What did you do? Hmm. Sorry, I'm talking away to you. Um, try running your uh, mouse over the bottom left corner of your PowerPoint screen and you should see some little buttons um, down there and then you should be able to advance from there if you can't get it to go otherwise. Oh, okay, all go. right, very good. Okay, that, okay, excellent. All right, so thank you very much for that tech support. Um, all right, so why Learn the Signs Act Early? As I mentioned, it was initially um, designed to help identify children on the, on the spectrum. And the statistics have actually changed. So this morning when I was preparing this presentation, the numbers have actually increased. A new study came out just days ago. And um, two weeks ago, my, my PowerPoint slide said one in 59 children has been identified on the spectrum, and now that number has been lowered to one in 54. Um, so monitoring children's development is incredibly important if we are going to identify either children on the spectrum, or as you can see, one in six children has a developmental disability, one in four um, is at moderate or high risk for developmental, behavioral, or social delays, and then if you look at the bottom, you'll notice that most parents are aware, kind of have an inkling around that 18 month mark, but most children are not necessarily identified until much further on. And that is lost time. So obviously we want to identify children as early as possible so that we can get them the supports, 
um, and the services that both the family and the children could benefit from. All right, so Learn the Signs, Act Early's mission. I'll just let you um, read that slide real quick. And all of the materials that I'm sharing with you today, they are all downloadable and all free on the CDC website. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But if you see something that you like, you can print off anything that you like and many of the materials you can order for free as well. So the, the key word here is parent or caregiver engaged developmental monitoring. So that is what we want to focus on. We want families to have the information about child development and we want to empower them with the ability to monitor their child's development. So the goals for today are, I just wanted to reiterate how important developmental monitoring is for families, share some free resources with you, and then um, I'm eager to hear how you think that you can incorporate Learn the Signs into your family, into the program, into your faith community, into your neighborhood, um, however you think that you um, can put these materials and these resources into the hands of, of families that have a baby, an infant, a toddler, or a preschooler. It covers children from birth to age five. All right, so this slide I like because it just reminds me of when I had a baby many years ago, um, my baby's 22 now, but I remember you know, going to the pediatrician and I remember being so excited to find out how tall she was and how much she weighed and how her head circumference was growing and reporting back to grandma and sharing all the exciting news. And, but it's just, um, we're not just focusing on physical development. We really want families to be equally as excited about social emotional development, about physical, like um, gross motor and fine motor development, social emotional development. There's other areas to look at instead of just like the physical growth. So these slides, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, it has like a little speaker. And um, these next four slides, I actually borrowed from a readily made pre-packaged PowerPoint that is available on the website. So if you were in the market for a um, parent education night on teaching parents about child development, if, you, if that would be beneficial in your work at all, there is a pre-made, already narrated PowerPoint. And I'm just sharing a couple of the slides from that PowerPoint so that you are aware that it exists and um, you, could, you could download it and use it easily yourself. But this is just, hopefully you're aware of why, um, what, what a milestone is and why that would be important. But this is mainly to share just um, that these are readily available to you. So it's, it's important because it helps a family connect with their child and helps them understand what to expect. And then it also, um, that last bullet there, provides important information to share with your child's doctor at every checkup. So there are a number of ways that families can track their child's development. There are um, three main ones that the CDC has um, provided. The first one is um, a checklist. The second one is a little booklet that follows the child from birth on up to five years. And then the last one, um, the most recent one, is that Milestone Tracker app that if you did log on, maybe you've had a chance to um, tinker around with and explore a little bit. But we've provided a variety of um, formats for them because some work for different, different types of families. And as you can see, like on the previous slide and on this slide, you know, it's really beautiful pictures of diverse families. The, the language is written in um, just kind of 
some fairly plain language, readily um, understood and easy, fairly easy to read. So um, the first one that I wanted to share are these milestone checklists. So the milestone checklists are provided at the same windows of time that the CDC rep uh, recommends for well baby visits. So that would be at two months, at four months, at six months, all the way on up to five years. So at those same increments of those well baby visits, there are going to be one of these sheets for a developmental checklist. And hopefully you can see on the slide is it goes over milestones in the area of social emotional development, in language communication, in cognition, which is like their thinking and learning problem solving skills, as well as the fine and gross motor development. And it doesn't ask too many questions. This is um, supposed to be just kind of um, easy to, to work with for families and not like overwhelming for families. So it, it usually asks a handful of questions in each of those four areas of development. And then it gives you on the back side of this particular document, it would give you just fun things to do with a child at the age of nine months. So some things that a nine month old child would be working on would be um, how you can help your child develop at the age of nine months. An example might be copy your baby's sounds and words. It might be um, say what you think your baby is feeling. It could be playing games kind of my turn, your turn, that copycat kind of thing with gestures or those types of things. So it gives you fun things to do with your child. But then in this box here, this is the act early part. So should your child be displaying any of these particular behaviors, that would be indicative of reaching out to your child's pediatrician and saying, hey, my child isn't recognizing their own name or my child is not babbling, they're not making any real sounds yet, you know, should I be concerned? And so these are really good checklists, really good things to check in in preparation for those well baby visits at those, um, those different developmental levels. These checklists are readily available on the website. Oh, I'm going to go back real quick. Um, these checklists are available on the website and they are translated in a number of languages. And in the event that you are working with a family um, that needs a language that is not available on the website, please um, reach out to me because I can probably get them in um, a, a number of different languages. But some of the languages that are available, of course, English and Spanish. All of the documents are translated in those languages. But in addition, there is, um, for the checklist, there is simplified Chinese, there's Somali, Vietnamese, Haitian Creole, um, Arabic, and more. So these, these are printable. Um, it's a front page and a back page for each of the developmental levels. I'm not gonna interrupt, but I'm gonna tell you, I use these with my teen parents. I keep a stash of them printed in my office and they are huge. And actually just yesterday, I grabbed the six month one for myself and brought it home. And I didn't even know that's what your presentation was on today. <laughs> well, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, so like if you're working with teenage parents, that's a perfect example. And I definitely wanna hear, um, feel free to interrupt as much as you like if you have some uh, experience using them and, and how you're using them, because that, that's something I wanna really talk about at the end of our presentation. Like, okay, so now that you know these are available, what will you do? But um, yeah, so like if you're that mom of a six month old baby, you know, you could, you could put this up on your refrigerator and it could just be this little reminder of, oh, I'm supposed to be, you know, playing peekaboo with my baby or, um, you know, helping her move things from one hand to the other or wh whatever the, the developmental stage is. So that's perfect. So there are these snapshots at each of the developmental levels and those are the checklists. And then the next thing that we have are, um, these milestone moment booklets. 
And so this is just kind of like um, a little booklet. It's maybe, um, I don't know, five, five inches by like maybe seven inches. So it's like a tiny little booklet. It would fit in a diaper bag. It would fit in a purse. And it covers all of the develop, developmental milestones from birth to um, age, age five years. And so this would be a handy thing um, to just kind of keep in that diaper bag, maybe jot some notes if you have questions. Maybe, maybe this particular child might be having a concern about not responding to their name or not responding to noises or something. And you want to remember to talk to the pediatrician about that. Or maybe, maybe there's something else going on with language development a little bit further down the road that they're mispronouncing some words and you're not sure, is that normal? Is that, you know, do I need a referral to a specialist? Or, um, and then I've seen some parents use this little booklet as almost like a scrapbook, like, oh, these were their first words, or this is, you know, when they took their first steps, or this is their favorite toy at such and such an age, or they like to play dress up and do this. So it's, it can serve multiple purposes, but this is, again, you can see the different developmental milestones, how you can help your child's development, and again, there'll always be those behaviors that um, you should kind of keep your eye out for and talk to your physician if um, you're seeing any of those atypical behaviors or significant delays. So the booklet has, um, I think I pretty much mentioned those things, but I'll let you just glance at that. So it really is handy to take to the well child visits. I think sometimes pediatricians, you have such a short window, what seems like a short window, and it's such an important visit. And oftentimes parents have questions and they'll be like, oh, I can't remember that question I wanted to ask. And so if you write it down in your little booklet, then you'll, you'll have that handy. All right, so I am going to turn it over to Mindy and we are going to watch a quick little, it's just like a two and a half minute video of um, that goes over the app. So we'll let her pull that up. Um, while she's pulling that up, did any of you get to, to play with the app while you waited? Well, Christine, I have. Um, this is David again. And, and when you were sharing with me about this early on, I immediately downloaded it and put in two different children. Now, granted, my children are beyond the age of five. And so I, I used my children's name, but just kind of put in a different uh, profile, if you will, of, of their ages. And it was amazing the amount of questions that it would ask. And what was interesting about when I was putting that on is that when you ask the question, a lot of times I might not have known exactly what it was they were talking about, but then there were video prompts that if I was unsure of what the questions were that they were asking, then I could watch that video and it showed a child doing the behavior or presenting with the behavior that they were asking about to help depict what it was. So I thought it, I found it really, really easy and interesting to Great, thank you for that feedback. Right. Okay, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna start sharing now. Let's see what Thank happens. you, I appreciate your help. Are you hearing the sound? Yes. Clara okay. is our first child and we didn't know what to expect <laughs> being first time parents. Um, and it's just been such a fun experience to watch her grow. Starting out very early, we monitor Clara's development using the Learn the Science Act early checklist. It was just an amazing resource to be able to say, okay, you know, what this is what she should be doing at this age. Um, and it calmed our fears a little bit. I would have to say my favorite resource of the Learn the Science Act early would be the app. But having that readily available has honestly been great. Um, and it's been awesome just seeing her, her development and growth. The Learn the Science Act early app is actually very easy to use. I can access it right there on my phone. And whenever my mind kind of pops to it, I, I can open it up. 
I think I am a Learn the Signs Act Early super user. The Learn the Signs Act Early materials have been invaluable to me because I feel like they've been there with me throughout parenthood in kind of the way that a wise old friend might be. Using Learn the Science Act Early has helped me monitor my daughter's development and gives me a great peace of mind that the information is accurate and it's backed by science. It's fun to see when she achieves a milestone. Um, I feel very proud for her and excited. And it's not just a milestone of is my child doing this next thing, it's what should I be working with my child next because that, that can be a big question mark as a first time parent. You know, I want to know if maybe she's lagging farther behind than she really should and then it's something to bring up with our pediatrician. Having something at my fingertips to kind of go through it with her physician, she's hitting these milestones but not these other milestones. Should I be concerned? Uh, what kinds of things can I do to bring her up to speed? And then taking that and translating it with her teachers in her classroom to make sure these are the things I would like to focus on and how can we work together to make sure that she's developing appropriately. The Learn the Science Act Early resources empower parents to take a stake in, in tracking their child's developmental milestones. Thank you for sharing that, Mindy. Um, so I think that that just kind of gives you a snapshot of, um, you know, some different parents and, and how they benefited from the use of the particular app. I, I love the app because, as David mentioned, it does include some um, videos. So if you're not sure what the question is asking, you know, if does your child follow, you know, two-step commands or something and you're not really sure maybe what that means and you, you need a little bit more information. I think that that is um, really, really helpful to have those little video clips available. Um, and then, Mindy, do you need to share, um, because all my little um, icons are not there. Uh oh, let's see. No, it still has you as a co-host. Oh, um, okay. I still right. share, so you should be able okay. to. Okay, I think I'm good. Can you see Milestone Tracker now? Not yet. We'll give it a, oh, I think it's trying. Okay. It's doing something. <laughs> all right. Um, so I do want to see, um, Has other than David, has anybody used the app? You can even unmute yourself if you're comfortable sharing. While they're sharing, maybe try sharing your screen again because it acts like it's not wanting. Coming okay, up. great. I actually just downloaded it while we were um, Did you? ready to go because I have a four month old granddaughter. So I Oh, that's perfect. Here. Yes, grandparents love it. And I'll tell you why grandparents love it, because grandparents have this like tight rope to walk. You know, it's like you, you want to let your children be parents. And yet, like sometimes if you do have a concern, you don't want to be the busybody grandmother telling them exactly what to do. So um, it, 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 a lot of times grandparents will be like, oh, I, you know, if, if they've had a concern, they'll be like, oh, this is such a good resource because then, then I can share it. Oh, I learned about this really cool thing today. Um, and then they can, um, you know, let the, the app actually kind of um, share the information. All right, are you seeing it or you're not? I'm not seeing it. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to continue. Um, so other things about the app that are um, really, really helpful are the fact that you can enter multiple children in it is a really good thing. And then the fact that you can, so it'll prompt you to, all right, I'm trying to, all right, share screen. I got it now. Um, so what the, what the milestone tracker will do is, is my screen coming up now? No. Um, okay, we'll get it. Eventually, oh, wait, wait, now here it comes. There it is. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's like getting that video, but I thought that video was important, but it's, it's kind of throwing me off a little bit here. Um, okay, so the, um, 
that's me at the Lexington Opera House, in case you were wondering. I was charged with <laughs> giving myself a background in Lexington. That's funny. I wasn't planning for that today. Okay, but um, I guess I can talk to you this way. So the, um, the Milestone Tracker app, you can enter multiple children. So if David has a son and a daughter, he can just put in there the, the gender, the name and the date of birth of however many children and it will track multiple children. So that's a really nice feature. Um, another feature are those little video clips and the, um, the availability to have um, little pictures and additional information. The, it does provide push notifications so that say you were to download it today and your grandbaby is four months old. Um, in two months, guess what? You're gonna get a little message on your phone that it's time to update your granddaughter's, um, her milestones and see you know, how she's doing on those. And then when your baby is nine months and when that baby is a year old, it'll say, hey, have you made your well baby visit? Um, how's your child doing on those milestones? And for children that are literally quote unquote checking all of those boxes, um, that's great. And um, you'll continue to get those push notifications on up to five years. For children, if you were to click not yet or not sure, then you will get a push notification in a week or so. And it will say, how is your child, my daughter's name is Shay, how is Shay doing on such and such and such and such on the milestones? Because sometimes you're asked a question and you're like, oh gosh, I didn't even know I was supposed to be looking for that. I didn't even know my child was able to do that. I'll, I'll have to keep a closer eye. And then you get the, um, you'll get that push notification and be like, oh, she's totally doing that. I just didn't even know to look for it. So that's kind of cool. And um, even if you are working say you, you're working in this teenage parenting program, but you only follow the, the babies up to a certain age. Like you might not follow them into preschool all the way, you know, when they're three and four and turning five and getting ready for kindergarten. But if, you, if your family is enrolled in this um, tracker app, they'll still get those push notifications. So that's really um, handy. And then again, it has room for notes for the, the family member to or caretaker to go ahead and um, write down any questions that they might have for their provider. One of the really, really cool features about the app is in the event that you are checking many not sure, not yet, then the app will say, would you like to create a report for your child's physician? and it will actually generate a report and you could either email it, and sometimes it might be a physician, sometimes it might be a social worker, sometimes it might be another service provider that's in the, the circle of supports for a particular child and family. Um, and, and that way, the family can go into the physician and say, hey, I have been using this app and it's saying my child is supposed to be doing these things and I'm not sure that they're doing them yet. Like, do you think we need to get a referral or do you think my child needs to be seen for an evaluation? Because there are early intervention services for children who exhibit delays. And so that may be a very viable option for a particular child if they are experiencing developmental delays. So those are some of the features like the enhanced features that the app has over just like the paper pencil checklist. Um, most people nowadays, they don't go anywhere without their phone. So I think that it's a really handy tool. And a lot of, um, you know, younger families really like that. If you have, say, grandparents that might be, you know, caring for and raising their grandchildren, they may potentially be more comfortable with a paper pencil version, possibly, you know, so we do have a variety of options available. Any questions about those, about any of the, um, oh, and I'm sorry, but the Milestone Tracker app is available in Spanish, Spanish and English. So the, the paper pencil lists are easier to translate and um, easier for people to download kind of like one document at a time, but the app at this current time, we just have available in Spanish and English. 
I'm just going to skip a couple of slides because I, I know we're supposed to stick to close to 30 minutes. Um, here is an image of um, of all of the different resources that we have. So you see the examples of the, the, the booklet in the bottom left and then the one pager. Um, Amazing Me right there in the middle and Where is Bear in the middle. Those are two children's storybooks that are available. And those storybooks are translated in English and in um, Spanish. And I, I have a, a copy of it here. Oh, there it is. Um, and it is a storybook about a two-year-old character that's doing two-year-old things. And in the, in the storybook itself, it's beautiful characters and engaging story time for children. But then at the bottom of the page are those developmental milestones as reminders to the caregiver, whoever's reading the story. It just kind of reminds you, oh, at this age, a child is you know, playing alongside their friend, you know, and, and it'll give you all of those developmental milestones. So it's kind of two for one. It is a um, storybook for children to learn about language and attention um, and just playing along and learning new words and colors and all the things that kids at two are learning about. And then it's also teaching parents about child development. So there is a storybook for one-year-olds, two-year-olds, and three-year-olds. And those stories are available for free. Those books are available for free when they're in stock. <laughs> um, I just looked before our call today and there is a board book that is available. Um, this is a board book for the one-year-olds and the board book is available in English and in Spanish. You can order up to five copies of the book. So if you log on today, <laughs> and I'm serious about that, um, because they they do go out of stock um, fairly consistently, and then you have to wait for them to restock. So right now, the one year old books are in stock, and the two year old books are in stock. So we'll we'll get to um, that link, and I'll show you that link, or maybe um, Mindy can put those links in the chat box for me as far as ordering the materials. In the center of this slide, you'll see Watch Me. Watch Me is a free training that's available for early care providers. Um, we're, we're getting the word out about that, but if, if um, you know anybody who needs free clock hours for, um, for child care then, or early, early childhood, then that may be a good resource for them. There are also these one pager sheets that we call. So how to help your child, how to talk to your child's physician um, about any concerns that you have. So there's kind of these one pager sheets that give you good tips. So this link here is where you would go to download the free materials. Honestly, you could just Google Learn the Signs Act Early Free Materials and you will get that link. Um, you can order the booklets. Those little milestone booklets are available right now in English and Spanish. You can get up to 30 of those per person and they will just be mailed to you free. And then the, the two books that I mentioned, the one-year-old book and the two-year-old book also we have these packets of um, flyers for the app. So it's available in English on one side and Spanish on the other. And so that may be something that you could potentially distribute um, in, some, in some way. So those are the things that are available on the website right now. Social media, um, are we okay? Are, are some of them, are some of the meetings allowed to go over the 30 minutes or should I wrap up? You are David? perfectly fine, you're good. Okay, all right, very good. I, um, so social media, for those of you that are um, on, on Facebook, there are some um, Facebook groups that are focused on this particular community. So Milestones Matter community has all kinds of great posts about child development and about these particular resources. And it's, and it's done by um, CDC ambassadors like myself from um, other states. But it's a, it's a really good option. You know, if you're, if you're wanting some kind of vetted Facebook posts, um, they're already there for you. You can just share them or there's some that you can just copyright off the Learn the Science Act Early website. 
Child Care Aware of Kentucky, which is the project that I work at specifically at the University of Kentucky, we have what we call our Milestone Mondays. And so every Monday we post examples of developmental milestones from, you know, from some are little and some are uh, for older children, but we definitely um, kind of use that coin of Milestone Mondays. And then there are sample posts, both um, the videos and social media web buttons. There's all kinds of resources that if you just wanted to um, borrow any of those materials, there's a whole library of videos of the children's development, of snapshots of kids doing different developmental milestones. And those you can also borrow. You don't need any special permissions. Or, you know, I mean, the CDC really wants you to be able to um, feel free to use those. All right, so what I would like to hear from you is how you think um, you might be able to use these, whether it's in your personal life or whether it's in your um, extension life or even other hats that you wear in your world. Like, who do you think that you're excited to share this information with? Christine, we had one person reply that they are using these resources as um, uh, to help uh, apply for a childhood council grant and uh, just saying what a great uh, addition these resources are to them to do that. Yes, that that is a that is a great thing. And this goes along with with um, kind of that early identification of children with um, delays and also with just parent engagement, right? So um, helping families understand child development. I, child development happens so rapidly and there's so much pressure on first time parents or second time parents, third time parents. It feels like child development is different with each kid that you have. But um, this just kind of gives you a little confidence booster and makes you feel excited about what's coming next and being able to anticipate what's, what's right around the corner. So those are good things. We've got another one that says uh, they use it at the ALC Pregnancy Center with Head Start parents. Uh, we have some that are using it with the community baby showers. Very um, exciting, yeah. I'm sharing this information with my little brother. He's expecting his first child. Wonderful. Uh, their library, one, one person says their library has Toddler Tuesdays, and they're going to share that with the parents that attend that group. Um, they say some of, again, family members uh, use this with small friends groups and grandparents as parents groups when applicable. So uh, getting those, those groups of kinship care parents who are, who are parenting a second time around, sometimes these are good resources to allow them to, to refresh themselves of what, what uh, remind them just what it was like to have a young one. Yes, uh, it's so true. Yeah, I'm delighted. I'm delighted to hear those. We've got another one that says working, they're working closely with their Friskies, um, and, and this would be good information to provide them as they provide services. Um, so Family Resource Center, I don't know if you're familiar with that yes. term, I apologize. Perfect, um, no. Uh, and I, I, some people are saying just for personal use, right? They got a couple people <laughs> who say they got three, they got a three-year-old daughter, just smiley face, that's funny. Um, preschool parents. So um, it seems like we're getting a lot of responses for folks clearly oh. able to identify who, who could use this as a resource and who, who they hope to provide it to. Fabulous. Well, I really, really um, appreciate those thoughts and ideas. And hopefully that's kind of been a springboard of, of ideas for each of the people on the call as far as who they might be able to share it with. I did have um, one other resource that I just became aware of like two weeks ago. And it is called Small Moments Big Impact. Small Moments Big Impact is a new app, and it is for those of you that are working with new moms, and this is new moms from newborn to six months old. This is a, a very narrow window, and it is developed for um, new moms, and it's not about medical information. It's not about um, child development. It is really about attachment to you and your baby and helping you reflect on where you're at in that journey. And I would, if anybody is working with, um, you know, this 
one of our colleagues here was working with teenage moms, or if you're, you know, um, working with anybody who has a baby from birth to six months, I would encourage you to check it out. Um, it encourages families to take little pictures and little videos to just like, and it helps you think about bonding with your baby and understanding the importance of that window of time. I have not had the chance to actually um, look at that yet, but it, it, it is very highly regarded. <laughs> um, so I know that, and the, and the press about this has not even really hit yet, but it is, it's done by physicians in Harvard and it is kind of gonna be rolling out really soon. So if that's an audience that is a target audience for you, you might just wanna check that out. So it's called Small Moments, Big Impact. And I will make sure that you have the link to that as well. So those were some of the things that I was eager to share with you. Um, I know uh, you're, you're all busy. Um, and so I can, I can take uh, questions now if anybody has them. If you have, uh, my, my contact information is there on that slide. You're more than welcome to reach out to me. If you would um, need any additional information or if you're thinking, oh, I really could use a bulk order of some of these resources. Sometimes I have the ability to get like a larger, larger order of things. So just um, just let me know how I can help you in the in the work that you're doing. So I will um, stay on if there's any questions or any comments. Thank you so much, Christine. I just I do want to say that there were some some folks that are watching on Facebook Live that also identified another way that they thought this would just be a really impact. Um, resource was with the Born Learning Academy families. Oh, yes. Um, and so just a lot of excitement today. So Christine, thank you so much for what you shared. Again, just a great response. It's, it's been fun to watch and, and who's been uh, making comments in the in the chat box as you were speaking and just so many folks identifying what a great and wonderful resource and uh, how easy and helpful they see it being. So. Um, well, yeah. I appreciate your attention. And what's kind of neat about this is that, you know, even if we're not in the early childhood world where many of us are moms or aunts or, or uncles or um, grandparents or, you know, so we all have little people in our worlds. And so we just want to make sure that they are um, getting the, the best supports available to them. So we all have a, a sense of responsibility to kind of keep our eyes out and, and make sure that the, the children are getting all that they um, all that they need. So I very much appreciate your time and attention and um, stay in touch. Let me know how things are going and if you need any additional information. Thanks. Christine, I want to remind everyone that um, I shared all of the links that you shared in the chat box on Zoom Great. and also on, um, in the comment box on Facebook Live. So they should be able to access those there. I forgot to have everyone uh, let us know where who they are and where they're watching from. So if you haven't already done that, um, please note that in the Zoom chat or Facebook Live comment, whichever one you're watching. Um, and also, um, I will add all of the links that Christine shared to uh, the YouTube video information. So you should be able to get it in just about any place that you look. <laughs> David, are you seeing any questions that we need to get answered before we wrap this up? No, just a, a lot of appreciation over here. So everybody just saying thank you and how helpful. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I really want to thank Christine for um, taking some time out of her day. I know that, that life is a little different these days, um, but I do appreciate you coming on and sharing with us all that, that's going on in um, the child care world or the, or the child um, care provider world. Uh, so that's great information that we can all use, even as you said, even if we don't have that uh, role in our life. We all have little children that we do have to, um, or we do get to be, to interact with. <laughs> Great. 
Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for your your tech support. (laughs) We're in week five here. We're almost getting this down to a science. (laughs) (laughs) Very good. Well, have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And I'll wrap up. Family and Consumer Sciences Extension at the University of Kentucky. Our agents share research knowledge with individuals, families, and communities to improve quality of life. Building strong families, building Kentucky. It starts with us.